Hey, welcome to the ground instruction for exercise 13, which will prepare you for the flight lesson on spins. So this is what an aircraft can look like in spin entry. So we can clearly see that unless you're doing aerobatics, there really isn't a reason to do spins in normal flight. However, stall spin incidents close to the ground continue to be a cause of tragic accidents in aviation. So we do train spins to ensure that you're aware of how a spin can develop and how to avoid one should a spin develop and how to recover from one. So how do you get to this point? A spin can result from an aggravated stall and develop due to one wing being more stalled than the other. Once a spin is developed, we call it auto rotation. And we'll talk about why the aircraft behaves this way and how to stop it. So a quick review of the consequence of a wing stall. A wing is said to be stalled when it is no longer producing lift and it is thus generating an excess of drag. The incipient stage of a spin occurs just after one or both wings are stalled. Now, if one wing is stalled more than the other, the drag of the wing will intensify the aircraft's yaw towards the stalled wing, starting the spin. Because the outer wing is generating a slight amount of lift, it continues to spin the aircraft and prevents the lower wing from hitting the oncoming airflow at a lower angle of attack, keeping the lower wing stalled and locking the aircraft in a spin. Attempting to turn out of the spin using the ailerons will actually reduce the angle of attack on the outer wing and increase the angle of attack on the inner wing, thus aggravating the stall and it can intensify the spin. Instead, the rudder must be used to yaw the aircraft in the opposite direction of the turn, thus regaining equal airflow over both wings and halting the spin. So now that you know why spins happen and how to recover from a spin, let's look at the entry, recognition, and recovery from a spin. So this is upper air work, so make sure you do your safety checks before attempting this maneuver and make sure that you're in a safe area. It's very likely that you'll lose between 500 to 1,000 feet in this maneuver. Make sure all loose items in the aircraft are secure and triple check seatbelts and doors. To enter a spin, follow the same process as entry into a power off stall, with the exception that when you lift the nose to stall the aircraft, you also apply full rudder. You won't have any confusion about whether you're in a spin or you're not. You'll be nose down, likely experiencing auto rotation, and your vertical speed will be high, but your airspeed will be low. To recover, pull power to idle, ailerons neutral, hold full opposite rudder, neutralize the rudder once the rotation has stopped, and then ease the nose back up and up to a climb attitude. Then gradually add full power and return to altitude if you will be trying the maneuver again. Review the spin recovery section from your POH and make sure that your aircraft is actually certified for spins. A 152 is always certified for spins with proper loading. However, the 172 only permits spins under specific loading characteristics. Specific safety considerations for this lesson are the following. Airspeed, always make sure that your power is idle in your spin recovery. Ailerons, it's instinctive to want to steer the aircraft out of the spin, but as we saw, that can actually intensify the spin. So fight the urge to try to drive the aircraft out with the ailerons, focus on the rudder, and for pitch, avoid a secondary stall by not pitching up too rapidly. Remember, you're going to be nose down and the instinct is to want to pull up. If you do this too aggressively, you can actually change the angle of attack too rapidly from the flight path and enter what's called a secondary stall. Again, just remember that it's not unusual to lose a significant amount of altitude in this maneuver, especially when you're doing it for the first time or if you let the spin develop too much. So always do your safety checks and really make sure that you're checking for traffic. And again, just make sure that your aircraft that you're flying is in is certified for spins. Great, you made it through. So here are some review questions. Take a look, make sure you know the answers. And uh, if you need to watch this video again, and uh, if you have any other questions, just bring them to your flight lesson. Thanks.